Hey guys, Nick here from Nick's Topics, and today, instead of my usual pre-recorded videos for the What If Sophia Joined Negan, or just in general, I have decided to invite a little guest onto my channel for my first real collab. Now, I did a collab with some guy named Cracked Crittenton or something on my What If Rick Met Negan Before Alexandria, but it was on Discord and wasn't really counted as a collab. But today, I have someone for a YouTube collab, my best friend, UGN Cass. Say hello to the folks. Hello, everybody. And today, I have invited him simply for the fact of talking about what ifs and just what ifs that I've done on my channel and what ifs that I have saved or just, you know, what ifs in general, whatever comes up. Because, you know, who knows what could stir up in conversation. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So first off, let's look back to some of the old ones that I've done before. For, for first and foremost, what if Rick spared Shane? Probably the highlight to my channel, and until that was overpassed by what if Rick met Negan before Alexandria, and what if the governor met Negan, that series alone on my channel sparked quite the freaking interest. But anyways, here's the big question for you, Eugene Kaz. What do you think might have happened had Rick actually spared Shane? Huh. I mean, I know a lot of people say they would have done a lot better because Shane was overall the better leader. Yeah, he was time. pretty much above everybody. Yeah. So he was basically in season eight territory, whereas everyone... Let's just say that he was brought into the field way too quickly. But say that Rick had a change of heart. He did not really want to kill him or Shane would not shoot him or something like that. He would listen. Because even though I feel Rick really did mean to put Shane down in the moment, I think it was just Shane really just releasing all the anger that he had and it's stirring up emotion in Rick. It was basically a battle on both ends and Rick came out on top. But with Shane being an asset, who knows what that could have done. Um, so, for... I think also, while I'm at it, for the guest especially, I think I should ask, if there is one what-if scenario, any show, movie, or anything that you would want to see, what would it be? Hmm. That's a good question. I might have to think about that for a while. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's a whole world of what ifs out there. That's why Nick's Topics is here to freaking explore each and every single parallel dimension. Basically. Um, now, while Eugene Kaz thinks on that, we'll look at some of the others and talk about them. Now, what if the governor met Negan? Probably one of my most popular videos on the channel. And it sparks over 6,000 and a half views. 209 likes and 63 comments. That's been out for a year. Just a solid 3 minute and 50 second video got that much attention. And there's probably freaking 10 second videos that would get just as much love. So coming from me, this might be small, but in terms of a topic video, I think it's pretty good. What do you think would have happened had the two of them crossed paths? Ooh. I mean, I don't... I think Negan would definitely try to merge the governor's group in with the saviors, but I don't think the governor would have uh, let that happen. Yeah. Okay, so how about this? I'll put it in the way the premise for my story actually took into to how it happened. The governor, he's just killed all his people and is left by Martinez. He's all alone. And this is bef when he meets Tara's family. But say, he somehow lives and makes his way to somewhere where the plot would allow him to meet Negan. Because remember, in a flashback of the whole Michonne joining Negan thing, although it was a hallucination, 
Let's just say a similar scenario with the governor. It happened that way. What do you think would have happened? Um, I don't know. So, like, the governor just joins Negan or, like, what? Well, if you think about it, the governor did not want to be around Tara's family. Yet he helped them out to go ahead and merge with the militia. So let's just say that he's put in that scenario again. But by this point, think of how much longer he'd be on the road. And how much the plot would drive him to be alive in order to meet Negan. Yeah. Let's just say at this point, he would have no choice but to freaking join Negan. Because think about it. The governor would literally almost certainly be near death. Yeah. He would be gone that long. So honestly, I see him joining Negan just out of sheer thing to live. Yeah. So he joins Negan successfully and grows accustomed to the life of the saviors. Does he stay with them and become like a good savior and later come in contact with Rick and things turn bad for them? Or... Do you think that the governor would pull a similar scenario where he did with Pete and those people and take him down behind everybody's backs? I think he could go either or, to be honest. Because, I mean, if he's all alone like that, obviously he's going to want to be with people, but... At the, at the same, same time, time, yeah. At the same time, we know how crazy the governor was. Hold up. Um, and here's another thing. There's a key difference that establishes both villains and how unique they were. First, we've got the governor. He, when he lost his zombified daughter Penny, with him, he was always crazy. It was that sheer fact of how crazy he was that you didn't know what he was going to do. Whether he was going to kill you, torture you, leave you be, you never knew what his true goals were until he showed them and it was too late. But with Negan, he had morals. He had high ground. Sure, people, he, he was a leader. He was a, a very jerk leader, bashing people's heads in just for the fun of it, killing people for fun. But Negan had morals. Whereas someone like the governor, he didn't care about morals. He killed his entire town just because they ran away. Um, so I feel that even the governor and Simon would get along great. Because think about it. Simon basically tried to, he almost succeeded in killing Negan. So let's say the governor joins. It would be twice as easy, if not completely a freaking walk in the park for the both of them to just take down Negan. And say the governor takes control of the saviors. And this all happens before Rick's group enters the fray. What do you think happens? Um... I think he could potentially take the saviors over. I mean, like, yeah, of course he would take the saviors over if Negan was gone and everything. Yeah. And being Simon and the governor, that would be a pretty sick uh, little tag team there. Yeah. But I mean, let's say, for, first and foremost, before we get to the specifics on what Rick's group would do, say the governor... Never goes to the prison. He never finds the militia or anything like that. Negan is the first and foremost thing. What happens with Rick's group? Do they just stay at the prison? Or do you think that the virus, however it was solved, do you think the virus would be solved? Or do you think that it would eventually become too powerful to solve and force them? Out of the prison. Hmm. I don't. I don't think it'd necessarily be solved, because I'm sure 
So you think I would have found a cure if that was the case? Do you think that they would have been stayed at the prison for good, or do you think that they would eventually have either moved on because of the virus or just moved on in general? Um. Interesting question. I mean, I think they were originally planning to stay. I don't know if, like, if the virus would have kept around long enough, if they would have. So, do you you, you think they would stay then? Yeah. So, Rick's group stays at the prison. So that means claimers live, and a bunch of people do not die, which also means Herschel lives, Beth lives, and lots of people. But. That would potentially, that would save and doom a lot of characters. For example, the wolves would most certainly likely still take Noah's home. And with Alexandria not defended, if the governor takes control of the saviors and does not see to Alexandria first, the wolves would very most likely just destroy Alexandria. There's no Rick, no anybody there. So that's gone. And honestly, Rick's group being at the prison won't save them if the governor joins the saviors. Think of how many communities he will have on his side. It basically ends up being if the governor takes control of the saviors or joins Negan, it all goes downhill. Yep. Until at least I feel the Whispers or the Commonwealth get involved, then it becomes a huge other kind of story. Yeah. But the sheer notion of these two big bosses joining together, whatever way, it does not end good. But yeah, it's a really good premise, and that's probably why it has so much attention, because it focuses on two of the most best characters, villains in The Walking Dead. But yeah, it's a really good question to come up across. But anyway, that's that one. And for just one more, I'm going to pick a good one. Just one more for the videos that I've done. All right. What do you think would have happened had Beth stayed with Daryl? Like, she was never kidnapped by the hospital people. Hmm. Good question, because obviously she would have lived had she not gone to that hospital. Mm hmm. I'm trying to think of how that would change things later down the line. Because I know for a while in the beginning, she was kind of like a background-ish type character. Mm -hmm. But she was in a relationship with Daryl. Kind of. Yeah. But, see, that's another thing. People question me on that so much because I focus on relationships between Daryl and Beth and pretty much all the stories that I can. The reason that that is, and this is to anyone listening right now, because... I feel that had Beth stayed around, it was just painfully obvious that this was a ship. This was a true and complete total relationship deal. And the actors were actually in a relationship. <laughs> I basically focused that idea, plus the fact how the details went with them in the original story, to put them into a good relationship and with Beth living and not getting taken that does do good for Daryl's character development but not for long because there is one big 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 problem claimers and had Beth not been kidnapped and they still were on the road to Terminus or whatever wherever they would have still ran into the claimers, most likely. And... Yeah. We saw what the claimers were planning to do to Michonne and Carl. Yeah, Beth is pretty much going to be... If, let's just say the claimers would try something on Beth, or something like that. Daryl would try to fight back, and with just two of them? If they don't 
force themselves to join, seeing no choice, they're both going to die out of fighting. And with Daryl out of the story, and Daryl and Beth not there, I feel that, honestly, the story would take just a downward turn. Yeah. Daryl was a key character. He has his own spinoff, for Christ's sake. So, the sheer... Fun fact, Daryl wasn't even a comic character, nor was Merle. They were both put into the show. So, that's probably why they made Daryl... I mean, Merle, I don't know what the reason for that was, but as for Norman Reese's Daryl... They made him have his own spinoff. So the idea of him dying so early on would just destroy the group. Yeah. Unless they joined the Claimers, which I feel is very unlikely with Beth Round, especially. Because think about it. All the Claimers we saw, there's not one girl Claimer. There were girl wolves, saviors, whisperers. People in the governor's town, girl reapers, but there was not a single, single girl claimer. Yeah. I should have told you all you need to know. And especially Randall's group. Randall's group and the claimers, instant, just girls are just screwed, basically. So honestly, overall, in the point of this plot, as I stated even in that story, I feel that Beth would have just her death the way it was was better than what she would have gotten originally because had she actually lived or stayed with Daryl in that moment it honestly would have just killed her way sooner even though it would have been a season sooner still would have been definitely just a worse turn for the story but anyways that's all the ones that I'm really going to discuss for my uh, videos that I've done. Now, for videos to be done, we'll discuss a bit of those. Before that, though, have you thought of anything for any movie or show you think would have a compelling what-if idea? I did think a little bit about the whole Walking Dead with the villain stuff. I was thinking, what if Negan didn't betray Alpha? What if Negan didn't be- Ooh! That's actually a good thing because I think that I put that, yeah, I actually have that as a story coming up in the future. And if I didn't share that in a community post, yeah, that's for the future too. What if Negan basically went th- through with, here's how I, the plot of that's going to be for me. What I'm basically going to be doing is I'm going to center around Negan and Daryl about to be killed by the Whisperers. And then they say we kneel to the new Alpha. But this time, when Negan takes the gun, he kills Daryl and becomes the new Alpha. That's going to be the plot of the story. And yeah, with Maggie and them all around, at first, it really didn't... It seemed like a washout with Negan joining the Whispers. But when you really look at all the details of the story, there's still a lot left to tell. But with Negan joining, honestly, Negan's redemption has probably been one of the best for a villain. So him just turning the corner like that for good and it being sincere in the fact that he actually joins the Whisperers, that would demolish his redemption. Any redemption that Negan had going for him, all Rick wanted to do So if they ever came across Rick again, Daryl obviously wouldn't, but Michonne, Maggie, oh Maggie, oh my god, Maggie would not even want to be close to Rick after that, and Rick would feel so much immense guilt, because we know he's alive. It would just, what if Negan became the new alpha, I tell ya. It definitely takes in a new story for Negan and honestly I wouldn't blame him at this point Negan honestly I feel with how long he had been in a cell 
and how he was treated by everybody. Joining the Whisperers? If we had not known his plan was to go there for Carol, and he did this just to do it, it, it literally would have been... Um, the whole point of his redemption would have been for nothing. Yeah. All Rick tried to do would have been for nothing. It, it would have been a horrible, horrible way to end The Walking Dead, but it would still would have made a very, like... It would have made an epic finale with, like, Negan leading the Whisperers, kind of like his... Call it the Savior's 2.0. Yeah. But then we still got a few problems with that story, because think about it. Beta would still be around. So, who's to say that Beta wouldn't rally half the Whisperers to him, and then Negan would get half the Whisperers with him? It would be like a whisperer brawl. Yeah. And then Negan and Beta would be at the end there. So it would be a fight to see who the true whisperer would be. But there would be no Daryl to save him because Negan would take him out. Yeah. So honestly, yeah, it, that's a that's a really good idea. And I'm actually glad that I already had that one saved because it's just very interesting. Um. But if I didn't have that one saved, I would definitely put that down for a story because it's really good. All right. Um, you got any more? Um, I don't think so. All right. Let's discuss a few that I have put on for the future. All right. Let's see. I actually have some real life ones. But before that, I'm going to discuss a Walking Dead one that I have. What if, in season three's finale, instead of Merle dying, Daryl gets there before him, and he offers to go and do the distraction himself? It's basically, what if Daryl dies instead of Merle? Merle becomes the new Daryl. How would this change the story? I, don't, I feel like... Merle's decisions throughout the story probably would have been worse because I think of how he was as a character. Who's to say that Merle's basically regret for letting Daryl go out there and die wouldn't help him step up to Rick and his people? Yeah, I definitely agree. He'd probably, yeah, he'd probably definitely want revenge for everything that's happened. <laughs> Merle would most certainly probably go get the governor himself. And <clears throat> either one of two things would happen. Either A, you'd basically go out, kill the governor, maybe kill him successfully, and everything would possibly be all right. B, get himself killed by the governor for trying, or C, just stay put. It could go a lot of ways if Merle was the main character, but we gotta think beyond that. Because that would take a... Daryl's story, once again, would be taken out way earlier on. And for Daryl to be alive now in the current Walking Dead... His story being completely destroyed like that? Um, and to replace Merle? What I think would be a good thing and a bad thing. For all intents and purposes. But it does make for a good story, though. Alright, we're going to discuss a few real life ones. What do you think would have happened had Abraham Lincoln never got assassinated? Hmm. Um. Trying to think. Uh. I definitely think he would do. There'd be a lot more reform, especially in the country as well, for African Americans and stuff. I think there would have been a lot more reconstruction too of the South. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think that the world it is even now would be so much better because we already know that Lincoln was a very good president. So for him to live, like he would either have to basically be told that 
he would basically have to be warned about his assassination mm -hmm. or he would see it right in the moment and stop him. Um, but either way, I think that it would really improve how our world is today. Heck, even COVID might not have happened. Who knows how much better our world could have been. Speaking of COVID, what do you think would have happened had COVID never happened? I, def I think that, uh, for schools anyway, on one hand, people around our age would definitely be a lot more educated mm -hmm. and stuff because they would have actually been in school more. But on the other hand, I don't think schools... Yeah, honestly, I feel even the same way. Because, yeah, people would be really more educated. And the world, how we look at it. Less riots, way more just everything. Yeah. Many, think about it this way. Many movies, games, shows, events, everything and anything would be released so much faster. So many more projects that have taken years to make because of COVID's thing, the yeah. whole lockdown thing, so much more work. Everything in the world could have been done so much better. And heck, this whole China and Russia and everything else thing might not even be a thing. Because, and even if it was, it would take way longer to form. Because COVID basically stirred a worse part of humanity. Yeah. Basically. I thought it would, to be completely honest with you, amongst many others, I thought we were getting zombies whenever COVID hit. That it was just gearing up for the zombie apocalypse. But it is what it is. But anyways, those are two pretty good uh, scenarios there. Um... Oh, here's an interesting one. What if 9-11 didn't happen? I think something of that sort would have definitely have happened maybe just later. Because I definitely, like, back then airport security was terrible. Yeah. I'm saying because of how 9-11 went, people still talk about it. Yeah. They mourn about it because it was such a... Tragic, chaotic event. I'm saying, what would happen if it didn't? Yeah. I think Americans would definitely be in the mindset that like we're kind of like untouchable since we're like so far removed from everything else. So you're saying that 9-11 not happening would make us more cocky and underprepared for like hostile events. Yeah. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that because... Yeah, we're definitely the kind of people that would do that if yeah. any person would get cocky if uh, certain things like that didn't happen. Because sometimes some things I feel are meant to happen, others I feel could have been handled differently, and others I feel shouldn't have ever happened at all. Hence, the whole idea of hypothetical scenarios, parallel worlds, and just the whole idea of what-ifs. It's just really something to um think about oh here's here's a very good one so have you heard of steven the freak out kid yes yeah basically from the channel waffle pone um that, that goes right up there along with the lines of mcjugger nuggets angry grandpa tony tornado all those freak out channels and Everything else. But, anyways, what do you think would have happened had Steven never freaked out? Well, the obvious answer would there be, there would be no more, there would be no more, there would be no videos of him freaking out, because obviously it wouldn't. So, like, Waffle Pone basically wouldn't exist. Yeah. And that would actually turn out to be something entirely, because... You want to know something? Yeah. McJuggernugget's whole channel was actually made. Waffle Pone and Steven 
that channel inspired McJugger Nuggets work. He said so himself yeah. because they actually got to meet. So if you think about it, if Steven never freaked out, McJugger Nuggets would have never made the Psycho series. Which honestly, it changed a lot of people's lives. Yeah. I think a lot of people were also inspired by that too. Because yeah. I think that was probably like the most popular like freak out type of thing. It, it, and yeah, it's, it's really entertaining the whole series. And even though Wolf Pona ain't fake, I know that for 100% fact. They definitely matured a lot over the years, but Steven's still Steven. Yeah. Um, but I think just in general, it would have affected a lot of people's lives with how they look at like psycho stuff and everything else. It's just something really to think about. Just a little funny thing there. Um, last one for today. What if Kevin in Home Alone wasn't forgotten? So the movie would essentially not be called Home Alone. Yeah. It would basically just be a Christmas themed vacation movie with a twist. I'll explain that more in a sec. I want to hear your thoughts. Hmm. Honestly, I haven't really watched like all the way through the Home Alone movies. I know there was some funny like Have you watched at least Home 1 and 2? Bits and pieces. Yeah, basically the idea is whenever Kevin is left home alone and his family forgets about him after a huge fight and everything preparing for a trip. Yeah. Harry disguises himself, one of the burglars, as a cop and tries to get everyone's thing for whenever they're going on vacation so he and Marv can go ahead and rob the places. So essentially, if Kevin is forgotten or isn't forgotten and he goes on the trip... That essentially not only turns it into a Christmas-themed vacation movie, but it lets Harry and Marv successfully burgle their house. Which means by the time that they return, if the cops didn't get them, every house in that whole area would be robbed. There'd be no... Honestly, I feel they would have been caught at some point, but the whole idea of Home Alone would just be nothing. There have definitely been more Home Alone-based movies, besides Home Alone, obviously, but I mean the whole idea, I think kids would not get as much of an idea as would be to be left alone at a house and know what to do if a scenario like that were to happen. Sure, the movie was more or less to just bring humor into the fact that Kevin was able to think about all this stuff and all these traps that could kill a person. Like, the flamethrower over Harry's head? Yeah, that would kill a person. It yeah. was more or less meant for comedy than anything else. But I'm saying that kids would not really get a true and 100% idea about what to do Whenever they're home alone, parents would not be as trusting of them. And sure, they're not really going to agree. There are probably millions of parents that still haven't seen Home Alone. But still, the idea I feel has helped a lot of families and kids to understand what to do. It's just something to think about. But anyways, that, I think, wraps up our entire video for today. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this little collab for the both of us. Definitely nice to have a guest here on the channel, and especially someone who's my best friend. Um, with that said, if you guys, like I always say, have any videos that you want to recommend me, leave them in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends. And check out UGN Kaz's channel in the description down below. It's a gaming channel. He posts every now and again. Has college, so eh. Um, but anyways, I will see you guys on Friday for the next part of What If Sophia Joined Negan. And with that, I'm out.